I gotta say, it's gonna be hard to follow that, Victor, because I felt the energy in your voice. You're hyped for this episode here of House of Horns to discuss the 2024 draft class for the Los Angeles Rams, and we're not alone. And this is where I get excited. I get hyped. This is uh, my good friend from the LA Times, Gary Klein. He is one of the best in the business, one of the nicest guys I know. And also, quick side story before I introduce Gary Klein here on the program. Gary got a haircut recently, and I recommended him to my barber in Pasadena going to a Mexican barbershop. So I love that from Gary. But uh, Gary, without further ado, let's introduce our guy here, Gary Klein of the LA Times, Ransby Reporter. <laughs> Gary, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, and thanks for that recommendation, Gilbert. <laughs> I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but how, how, how did it go for you being at a barbershop, primarily in speaking Spanish and all that? Oh, it was fantastic. You know, I had had, uh, I have, have someone who's cut my hair for about 30 years and she was out of town and I, I really needed a haircut. So you really came through and Saul and uh, the guys at that barbershop were terrific. And it was, it was great to be in an environment with all the conversation you can imagine going on in a barbershop. Some of it in Spanish, which I was able to pick up with my, uh, <laughs> the, the Spanish I learned in school and whatnot, but uh, it really was a good time. And thanks hey. very much. No problem, Gary. Honestly, I was, you know, I was telling Victor and I was telling Fernando, I'm like, you know, Gary hit me up about getting a, a, a barber in Pasadena. And I, and I told him, no way he's going to go. I don't think he's going to try. But sure enough, the next day you walked in, got a haircut. You're still looking good. So I appreciate that uh, for taking me up on the recommendation. You trusted me. That's a big thing for me, Gary. So I'm glad that it worked out for you. Well, maybe I'll start a new trend because when I asked Saul, I said, when was the last time you did a flat top? And he said... <laughs> I, I said, do you think it's coming back into style? He said, I don't think so. And I said, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm in your hands. It, it's, it's funny. I don't want to keep going on this, Gary, but Saul, you know, he's an older gentleman. He's been cutting hair for a long time. He cut my hair since I was like 17, 18. So uh, he's seen different styles throughout the years. So I'm glad you guys have a conversation about that, Gary. Okay. But to shift over to the Rams here, and I got to ask you, because uh, you've been covering the Rams since they moved back to L.A. in 2016. The last time they had a first-round pick, uh, a guy named Jerry Goff in 2016. And then all those years of having Thursday off of first round, the NFL draft, was it a little weird to work on a Thursday opening night of the draft? Uh, it really was. And, and I have to tell you, I, I kept thinking, okay, Les Snead is going to trade back out of the first round to keep the streak alive and, and, uh, and allow maybe someone to have a beverage at the end of the night rather than having to write the story. But uh, he, stayed in the, he stayed in the first round. Uh, and it really was strange. I mean, I was there in 2016, you know, actually in Chicago when they uh, selected Goff. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, until the other, until last week, I had not been working on a Thursday night for a long time. Yeah, it must have been really weird for you, Gary. And I was thinking the same thing, either the, some kind of trade, either trading out or trading up. And, you know, they were there at number 19. But before we ask you some serious questions here about the NFL draft. Victor will handle that. But I'm just curious about the, the draft house in Hermosa Beach. How was that for you guys? And you, you've done it for the last couple of years, right? But it, does it get better every year for the draft house for the Rams? Well, I think, that, you know, the, I have to give the Rams some credit. They've been very creative in the way that they've handled the draft. Uh, they were in Malibu, you know, several years ago. Uh, they were in the Hollywood Hills. They were in the San Fernando Valley. And now they were down in the South Bay in Hermosa Beach. Uh, and they tied it into an event they actually did on the beach, which I think was very successful for them until the wind shut it down on the second day. Um, but it, it really is a different kind of environment. I think uh, beat writers in other cities that don't have this opportunity to really mingle with the coaches and the scouts uh, during most of the time when they're not actually on the clock, uh, it's invaluable, I think, for the reporters just to get to know the people they're covering uh, in a setting that uh, that isn't so sterile like it is usually out at the facility. So it was, a, I, I give it high marks. Yeah, uh, Gary, I wanted to ask you just before I ask you anything about football related, um, how was it, uh, you know, that one year with Gilbert on the beat there? And what's, is there a fond memory you have of, uh, you know, getting to work with Gilbert? Well, I what I remember about Gilbert when he came in, you know, he kind of played it kind of played it cool. He didn't, you know, a new guy on the beat, didn't want to kind of overstep his bounds. And uh, in the media room at the Rams, you know, there was a front row seat right next to me. And uh, for several weeks, you know, Gilbert was kind of sitting in the back, more of the, you know, towards the back of the room. And I finally said, hey, come on, man, you're, you're the guy. <laughs> you're asking great questions. You got to ask them from right here in the front row. And, uh, and Gilbert stepped up and 
did a great job and really lent himself to, uh, you know, you have to understand on a beat, we're all competitive. You know, we all right. want to be the first. We all want, but uh, you also, there is a camaraderie there because, you know, you're trying to get the news and different things. And uh, Gilbert was was a great addition. We were sad to see him go uh, when he when he took the, the new job, but it was a great step for him. And we miss him to this day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was going to say, sorry, Gilbert. I was going to say, I, I noticed that, you know, the, the connection that you guys have as a B during training camp last year, everybody was coming over to Gilbert and telling them that. So I just wanted to make sure I asked you about that. Go ahead, Gilbert. Sorry. Yeah, you're, you're going to make me blush here, Gary. But yeah, you know, that, that was pretty cool of you to do because I was trying to be the cool kid. Again, getting cool haircuts and trying to sit in the back, being the cool guy. But it was, I think you, you did, you know, kind of read me for a bit. Like, you know what? I didn't want to overstep. You know, you've been there for a long time. Obviously, Jordan has been there for a few years, too. And, you know, it's kind of like with Jim Hill. When you see Jim Hill, he asked the first question in L.A. Right. And I was like, well, I know Gary Clyde. I've been reading his work from his USC football days. And and obviously, we you know, working at Rival Papers, I'm like, I didn't know how to play it out. You know, I've been at other places where, you know, people are a little, hey, get away from me, new kid. Uh, you're not on my level, kid. We're competitive here. But I do appreciate, Gary, that you found the balance to keep it competitive. We're all professionals. But, hey, it's okay. Be up. You, you earned that spot up there. That's and right. I took it, and you, you reminded me, so I appreciate that, Gary. <laughs> yeah. All right, Gary. Now for some football. Now I got to ask, you know, the hard-hitting questions here <laughs> uh, before Gilbert gets in here again. Um, but, you know, the, the, the Rams are coming off a playoff, you, you know, a playoff season, and – they lose Aaron Donald at the beginning, right before, you know, the, the offseason begins. And now they're having to construct this roster. Have they done enough, in your view, to, you know, fill some of the position needs, whether it's been in free agency and now in the draft? Well, you know, that remains to be seen, right, until they really start playing. But uh, they did – they were obviously very active in the draft, not so much uh, in free agency, uh, but I think in the draft – in terms of especially that defensive front uh, with the absence of Aaron Donald. Of course, we all know, you know, you can't, you're, they're not going to replace him uh, with one person. And even if they tried, that person is not going to be able to uh, replace, you know, arguably one of the, one of the best defensive linemen in the history of the NFL. But I think that the Rams uh, with the way they drafted, they did, they're attempting to address it. And uh, you know, with a first round pick getting an edge rusher, a uh, second round pick getting a tackle and then getting two more, you know, defensive linemen, uh, you can't fault them for lack of trying. So I think they really did that. Uh, they, you know, for fans, they went out and got a kicker <laughs> and yeah. for them, but really, I mean, to kind of quiet some of the, the, the screaming that you could hear even from outside uh, SoFi Stadium, you know, they, they drafted a kicker uh, in free agency, uh, signing, bringing back Darius Williams uh, and, Tredavious White, bringing in Tredavious White, you know, they've addressed some stuff at corner. So I think they got to feel pretty good about going into the season, at least with, you know, having some framework of how they might do this, especially on defense uh, with a new defensive coordinator and Chris Shula. Yeah, Gary. And that takes me to my next question. And it has to do with Chris Shula. I mean, you know, not, no, Aaron, no Aaron Donald. You see Raheem Morris move on. What is the a good expectation for fans to have with Chris Shula, uh, you know, in his rookie season as defensive coordinator? Well, um, you know, I, I think it, it it's going to range, right? I mean, he's been around uh, Sean McVay, you know, forever since college, since they were college teammates. Um, he's been around some great defensive coordinators and Wade Phillips, Raheem Morris, uh, Brandon Staley. You know, he has been there. Uh, through the evolution of that defense. And I will say in his introductory news conference, um, he wasn't just a guy who'd been an assistant coach. You know, he didn't come off as just, hey, I'm a longtime assistant, I'm taking over. He really commanded <laughs> that news conference, I thought, uh, and appeared to be someone who's ready to take on this responsibility. Now, when it gets into the heat of the moment, he's got to make those in-game decisions uh, and, and game planning and stuff, we'll, we'll have a better idea but I think going in, um, you know, fans shouldn't be worried uh, about necessarily what he's doing. Um, but it'll it remains to be seen if he and his assistants can get that defense playing at a level that uh, is is going to equal or or better, you know, what that offense should be. 
Yeah, Gary, a lot of good players now for Chris Schiller to, to take over in year one as a DC. Been around like a long time, like you mentioned, Gary. But let me ask you two questions here with the with the first two picks. I'll start with Jared Verse, uh, the first round pick out of, of Florida State, and actually his his teammate, uh, Braden Fist, too. Uh, but Jared Verse to stick with him, you know. They got Byron Young in the third round last year. He played pretty well. You know, I want to say well, almost double-digit sacks there. Uh, they're building that front with, with, you know, I think you asked a question, too, after the first, uh, after the, the draft was over, a hey, four out of your six picks are on the defensive front. So, they, and also they got Kobe Turner and they got Byron Young. But what was it about Jerry Verse that they really liked that number 19? Because like you mentioned, they could have traded out. They could have traded up. So something tells me they kind of felt good about the board. Hey, we like this guy. It could be Jerry Verse. Maybe they wanted to get Latu or maybe a Dallas Turner, but they just weren't there. And Jerry mm-hmm. Verse was still good for them. What did they like about Verse? And uh, probably like a two-parter. I'm asking a lot of questions here, Gary. One so, thing I know that you enjoy and I enjoy myself as a, B, a former B reporter is getting to know their backgrounds, you know, where they came from, what made them become a football player, you know, that they play different sports. So, uh, you know, for the two-parter, what did they like about Jerry Verse, the football player? And then the second part, what did they like about Jerry Verse, the player off the field? Well, I think what they like about him on the field is good size, great athleticism, you know, and and the other thing is what they saw on tape. I mean, no matter, <laughs> we go through the whole draft season, right? Mock drafts, what's this prospect? Who's that prospect? When it comes down to it, these coaches, these GMs, they rely on what they see on game tape. And they like, you know, Florida State had a great season. We kind of forget about them because they got shut out of the college football playoff but they had a great team. And uh, I think they saw his production. They saw his athleticism. And I think what they see off the field or maybe in the background, and this is this is actually consistent not only with Verse, but with Fisk and going back to Kobe Turner and even Byron Young. These are all guys that started at small colleges. They started their careers at small colleges and they finished them because they wanted that challenge. Uh, of going to a bigger school and proving that they were NFL worthy. And all of all four of those guys did that. And I think Verse, you know, it, and, and Fisk, just the latest, uh, there's something to be said for those kinds of players. Of course, you know, he may not be that freak, you know, top five pick, but you, you've got, when you look, combine, you know, what his physical skills are with what he has shown, I think, mentally in terms of just making that journey and making himself into a, a prospect, uh, I think that uh, that adds to the to the Rams feel that this is a, a guy with a similar kind of attitude with the guys that we've got our young guys now and that he's going to fit in and that, uh, you know, we're going there ostensibly they're going to give him more skills to help him really succeed. That's a really good point, Gary, because I was, I was telling Victor, I'm like, they've they've invested a lot in the defense front. They're planning. They planned ahead for Aaron Donald last year with, with Kobe uh, Turner and Byron Young, and they got those guys right. They invested more capital this year. And then the theme that you mentioned, like, you know, small schools, they might not be a superstar, but they're going to be, they're going to work hard. They're going to, you know, know their assignments. They're going to be in the right spots. And what's the best way to replace Aaron Donald? Having four or five guys who are really, really good. They might not be legendary Hall of Famers, but really, really good players. So that's a good point by you, Gary. Now going over to Braden Fist, uh, the teammate of Jerry versus Florida State. You know, I, I was curious about them going up from number 52 to 39, and they gave up a 2025 second round pick. That's a high price to pay for a player so that tells me they really like the kid uh but again you know why was it worth for them to go up and get the football player and also what did they like about fisk as a off the field uh, player well I, as i mentioned i think he's traveled not the same road but a similar kind of road as verse right started at uh, western michigan played there forever and then decided you know i'm moving up you know i'm, I'm gonna test myself and i think what made him you know more attractive to the rams and maybe you know, or uh, uh, enabled them to make that kind of move is, you know, they've played together. Uh, Verse and and, and Fisk obviously have played together. And if you listen to them after they were drafted, they're like bonded in terms of their work ethics. So I think what the Rams maybe were looking at with him still on the board is like, hey, that's not going to be any kind of transition that we're going to have to wait for. They know how to play together. They haven't played in our system, but they yeah, they're on the same wavelength already. And so I think, you know, that lent itself uh, to the Rams making that move. Now, as you mentioned, I mean, that that was a, kind of a steep price to pay for, uh, you know, moving up. Um, but the Rams feel confident and, and we'll see how this all plays out. You know, the, the other thing that I would add is just and Gilbert, you saw it. You saw it when you covered the Rams. You've seen it from afar, you know, just covering the league. 
Um, you know, Aaron Donald makes everyone better. I mean, you know, Kobe Turner had a great rookie season. Byron Young had a great rookie season. And, and not to take anything away from what they achieved, but they were playing with Aaron Donald. And now they're not. And and that's it'll be interesting to see what kind of impact, you know, that has on their performances. It may actually free them up to, you know, show even more of their skill set. But uh, with without Aaron Donald in there, um, even though they say there's no pressure on these guys and they want them just to be themselves, uh, there's going to be pressure on them to to help fill that void. Yeah. And I, I, you know, hearing you say that, it reminded me, I think it was a quote from Great Gaines a couple of years ago when Aaron Donald went down and he's, he's like, well, what's different? He's like, well, I usually I, you know, I have to wait for him to set up, you know, the block, you know, to, to get penetration. And now it's like now I'm doing a different thing. I'm actually allowed to rush the passer. So it's kind of different. So now with Kobe Turner, he's going to be allowed to do those things. But I wanted to ask you, the next thing I wanted to ask you was we kind of talked about, you know, some of the surprises like Blake Corum, and then you also had Cameron Kitchens, you know, the safety, because those are two positions they've already taken care of. You would, you know, we talked about in the off season, but was there any surprise for you with, with, with either Blake Corum or even Cameron Kitchens who they drafted in the third round there? Um, I would say, you know, I, I was, a little bit surprised that they went for a running back, you know, in, in the third round. But um, I also think that, you know, the Rams are looking beyond this season too. I mean, and, you know, Kyron Williams had a great season last year, uh, but they need, they need another productive back. And I think Corum is a guy that showed he's durable, you know, and, and, and he, he'd be a great comp. He comes from a winning program. Again, they're adding to their culture there. Um, so I, so on that level, it wasn't a surprise, you know, I mean, I think the days of, um, you know, drafting a running back in the, in the first round anymore are largely gone. Right. I mean, just the way the league is gone running backs to even get a second contract with the team that they're on it, is difficult. So I think the Rams are looking ahead. I think he, he strikes me as the, you know, on the limited <laughs> exposure I've had to him in interviews and stuff. He, uh, he seems like a great fit from a culture standpoint. And then Kinchins, I think, you know, the Rams do, without Jordan Fuller, they lost some leadership uh, and some playmaking, although he wasn't, you know, a real, uh, you know, a spectacular guy in terms of getting turnovers, but he was a solid leader and really ran the defense back there. I think Kinchins is a guy, uh, at least if you look at his production at Miami, is someone who covers that field and can create turnovers. And I think the Rams, you know, are looking for a little bit more of that out of their defensive backfield. So that's that's why I think they went out and got him. Yeah, now you have two Cams and two Kobe's in <laughs> in the defense. So um, just in terms of the day three, I, you talked about the kicker, Cardi. Was there anybody else that kind of stands out as somebody who – you know, uh, you know, we know what happened last year with Puka Nakua. He was drafted, you know, in the in, in day three as well. Is there somebody that kind of people, uh, fa Ram fans, should keep an eye on? Well, I think all, I think all of them are 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 worth keeping an eye on, just because the Rams have had pretty good success in on the, with those day three picks. Uh, you know, I don't think I don't think it's fair to expect you know Jordan Whittington to to do what Puka did last year, uh, but he's a guy that you know can maybe find a role, you know, in the rotation um, with those, with those guys. And again, I think the Rams are looking ahead to the future in terms of how that receiver core is constructed, you know, this year. Um, he's a guy that could come in and he seems like kind of a grinder, you know, who, who, who stayed with it at Texas while other, you know, more heralded people were coming in. He, he kind of just kept doing his job. Um, uh Tyler Davis, a nose tackle, you know, gives them another uh, defensive lineman uh, it, it, as in the middle. And, uh, of course, Brennan Jackson uh, from Washington State is is a, a local kid, you know, from Temecula, another guy who, who might be able to give them some uh, production on the edge. Uh, and then you have the two offensive linemen, uh, Bo Limmer, who some people are calling, I saw, I've seen, you know, the sleeper yeah. of the draft. Yeah. Um and uh, gives them great insurance uh, in terms of, you know, with Steve Avila, you know, moving to center. Um, what, hopefully for the Rams, uh, that, you know, that works out for him and, they, and for them. Uh, but Limmer, I think, is a guy, a big prospect that's played a lot. 
And then uh, Leviston, the the uh, offensive lineman from Kansas State, strikes me as probably a project. You know, a guy who played tackle, but that they might uh, can work as, as an inside guy and and add depth. So, you know, I think it was I think it was a really solid on paper draft for the Rams. Uh, now it just remains to be seen uh, how those guys uh, pan out. All right, Gary, we got two more questions for you, and we'll let you go here. You know, one Rams related, and maybe a fun question after that. But I got to ask you about Matthew Stafford, and you know, asking about you know the guaranteed money and. and for me, it didn't seem too surprising because when you play that well a year ago and you got one year left of guaranteed money, you're going to ask, right? You got to at least ask to get a little more money. It reminds me a little bit of the Kirk Cousins situation where like, all right, Kirk, we gave you so much, so much money. Enough is enough. Go play the last year and we'll figure it out. But we saw what happened with Kirk Cousins. He had to go get his money on the market out there. To you, what do you take away from Stafford and that guaranteed money situation? Well, I think that the fact that the Rams, you know, addressed, addressed it on that, on that, uh, af on the night, on the day after, when you know that after the draft, when that came out, um, they acknowledged it. Uh, you know, he's their guy. That that team isn't going anywhere. You know, without Matthew Stafford, and they're going to do what they need to do to keep him happy. But the impression I got uh, from Sean McVay's comments was, "We know what he means to us. You know, we're working to reciprocate, and I'm guessing that they'll work something out that keeps all parties happy." Okay. Yeah. You know, I'm sure they'll figure it out, but Gary, uh, I want to share a little bit of your background. And I think, you know, we became, you know, good friends because of our, you know, the way we were, you know, brought up, you know, both Pasadena natives and we both went to Cal State Northridge, you know, so, uh, we, you know, we've gotten a couple of drinks out there in Pasadena too. So we get along pretty well, but uh, Gary, I just like your, your background story because a lot of people, you know, have to kind of grind it out and, and to work their way up and got to hustle. And, you know, I had, I had put in my fair share of years, but I remember you were working like, you know, and is it the old days at the OC, at, at Orange County LA, LA Times offices? You're working your way up. You know, you saw the USC football opening. You took it. Then you saw the Rams coming back. That's my beat. And you took the Rams beat in 2016. You know, I want to do this a little more. And we've talked about, you know, maybe kind of, you know, talking to, you know, younger journalists that, you know, they want to make it in this business. And, you know, eventually, hopefully we, we get to do that, go to a couple of schools or, uh, or colleges. But what is the best advice that you give somebody that wants to do what we do? Uh, in this business of being a sports reporter? Well, I think the main thing is it, there's so much, uh, you know, um, at the moment, it, the business obviously has been evolving and cutting back and whatnot over the, over the, over the last 20 years, you know, but the fact that we're here uh, on the, in this medium doing this shows you that there's opportunities well beyond that were there when I started in my career. Uh, and even when you started in your career. And so I would just encourage uh, young aspiring sports journalists to not let uh, don't let people dissuade you from getting into this if you if you really have a passion for it because you will find your niche you'll find a spot and it may not even be in the in the spot that you envision initially because new opportunities are opening up all the time and just you know be smart be nimble uh, ask a lot of questions not only of the people you're interviewing but the people you're working with so you expand your network. And uh, and you can have a really uh, satisfying and long career. And take that front seat of the Rams uh, news conference, right? That's Gary? right. That's there right. You go. Well, Gary, we really appreciate the insight and your time. You're so gracious with your time. And, you know, I learned a lot. I think our viewers did as well. I'm sure Victor did too. So yes. we appreciate that, Gary. That is Gary Klein of the LA Times. He's been doing it for a long time, covering USC football, covering the Rams since 2016. Gary, we really appreciate the time. Thank you, Thanks Gary. very much for having me, you guys. Really appreciate it.